Hey everybody, I'm SystemJet66, and uh, as if it wasn't obvious enough, the Resident Evil series kind of sucks. So, spoilers. We're going to be getting spoilers straight away. I want to I want to spoil this straight up. Uh, because really, in in terms of canon and how it fits in with the, the video game series, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. So, warning, this is a big spoiler. I haven't got through the whole series yet. I spoiled it myself because I just... I was watching the first two episodes. I thought, listen, this is going to be a slog to get through. Wesker is a clone. Albert Wesker in this is a clone. There's your answer. That's why Lance Reddick is playing Wesker. I'm not sure if he's one of the Wesker children or he's cloned from Wesker, so he has the same DNA but to totally different looks. I don't, I don't fucking know. Lance Reddick is probably the best thing about the series along with the bioweapons... The zombies suck, but the rest of the bioweapons are cool, they're handled quite well. And probably Evelyn, spoiler, Marcus, who's James Marcus's daughter or granddaughter. Some, some, something or other. So, there's the spoilers. There you go. Wesker's a clone, and that that answers the whole whole controversy, debate, etc, etc. Why is Lance Reddick being cast as Wesker? Because he's a fucking clone. There you go. And it's tone deaf. It's exactly what I'd expect from this series. Unfortunately, I've got through episodes one and two. I'm halfway through three. Episode three is where it really starts to get rolling. Um, and it has callbacks to the older games. Explains that Umbrella destroyed Raccoon City. Or at least, well, they did, you know, due to their negligence and, and the virus and getting sort of loose and, and leaking out and stuff. So, from the lab underneath the city and various other labs. So, yeah, it explains that it's... Um, they ask Evelyn, Evelyn Marcus, you know, how are you different from your father? And she goes on to talk about James quite a bit. Um, and I'm trying to think now. The T-virus is the main virus in this at the moment. Um, yeah, and it's basically Umbrella up to their old tricks. But a lot of people are going to, if you're a huge fan of the series, same as me, are going to call bullshit on that one because um, there's a huge gaping plot hole. It's massive. So everything that happened prior to this series took place, you know, in the games. It happened in the games. All the stories, Albert Wesker died in the volcano, blah, 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 etc., etc. Raccoon City destroyed Resident Evil 7 the rest of it. But Resident Evil 7, Umbrella are blue Umbrella. You know, they are basically disbanded Umbrella members and employees that didn't agree with what Umbrella was doing. They didn't have a clue of what Umbrella was doing, you know, behind the scenes. Uh, selling bioweapons to the American military, which Wesker explains in this series. Um, so they, they formed Blue Umbrella and hired Chris. And at first, in Resident Evil 7, Chris isn't sure of them. But uh, I don't know. Like, was that too... And looking good in front of the public eye so they could just recreate Umbrella? I mean, doesn't the world and a lot of people know about what happened to Umbrella and what they did, the atrocities they committed? Um... I mean, it explains it in episode 3. Yeah, I don't know. It, there's a huge gaping plot hole, definitely. And it hasn't explained it yet. So who knows? Maybe they're going to explain it as the, the series goes on and plot unfolds. But yes, it's hugely disappointing. The first two episodes... I'll say disappointing. I went, went into this with low expectations. I wasn't expecting anything. And yes, Constantin still hold the rights to live-action Resident Evil anythings. So yeah, I mean, Infinite Darkness wasn't any better than this. But... Uh, well, it was actually. It was slightly better than this, but still, this is this is crap. Like it's bad. It's bad. Um, first two episodes are really boring. I predicted there'd be like some family melodrama, and one of the kids gets bullied at school, and she's a psycho, and she's lost her shit with another kid before, and so she tends to be more placid and tries to be calm and apologise to this bully, um, and then you know Jade Wesker who sort of like you know she has she's the protagonist um her story takes place in 2022 within new raccoon city which is in africa south africa they moved there with lance reddick you know with wesker um and then it takes place in 2036 within london and it's kind of weird hearing so many english accents and stuff within the resident evil sort of series or something outside of that you know Resident Evil media. Um, I know that Chris has a British soldier within his Wolfhound pack, whatever they were called. Um, so yeah, it was weird even hearing that. But, you know, it's it's weird. Like, it feels weird. It feels a bit off, definitely. And they're so, like, typical British accents. Having said that, though, you have, like, some York accents in there, some Scottish, Irish. One of the main villains that's chasing Jade and 
various people around uh, London is this this chubby Irish dude, um, this just nerdy looking, just uh, like I can't even like he's just a geek and Umbrella have him chasing her, and he's like typical evil villain bad guy, but he's just so weird looking. Like if you want to think about who they'd send to, like this, I can't even. Why would you have this sort of dude being in charge of the military for Umbrella and chasing people around? And that's that's something. In 2036, it's all apocalyptic again, just like the Anderson films. The great thing about the video game story is it never became apocalyptic. It, it contained these outbreaks, but they were happening across the globe at a huge rate. And that's cool, but they, they always contained. And it just it was more realistic. It made more sense. But this, this goes the Anderson route. I see why the director was saying, well, it can share some, some things with the films, but it can, with the Anderson films, but it can share it with the games as well. This doesn't earn the right, this doesn't earn the right to, to carry on the plots and story points from the, the game's canon. After RE4, even 5, you can, you can go do what the fuck you want because the game stories went, went to shit, to be honest. They were going to shit even like with Resident Evil 4, if I'm honest with you. I think RE5's story is more gripping than 4's. 4's is just cookie car. But uh, I think, yeah, I think after the original series ended with Code Veronica, Zero and Remake, that was it. The stories went south. They went left field. They went crazy. And, you know, and this show just kind of, it's trying to borrow from like Resident Evil Zero quite heavily. I think it's going to borrow from 5 at one point, they're saying. You know how Wesker actually died. He died in a volcano, etc., etc. But it's just, um, yeah, it's just, it is what it is. Like it misses out, uh, you know, the fact that Blue Umbrella exists or they did exist. So I don't understand how Umbrella have been able to operate within the world and you know bring facilities back up and running or create like new facilities. Uh, the series is just, it's, it's trash. Is straight trash. Like all the characters aren't interesting. Um, there's some really weird moments. Like the director's like a twelve year old little boy. He he keeps shoving all these weird porn references in into the series. I kid you not. I'm being serious. Like you're gonna sit there and think, is this what I, is this what I want to be seeing from Resident Evil? Like at one point, Lance Reddick tells this uh, the father of this bully who's bullying Billy. You know, I'll get you blacklisted even from Pornhub if you keep messing with my my kid. What the fuck? He's talking to Evelyn because she's um, bit 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 of backstory, but she's like a lesbian. She has a wife. He seems to be interested in how things are going with her wife. So he he says like, yeah, oh, things are all cool with your wife now. I'm serious. I'm not making this up. I'm not joking around. He says, yeah, oh, everything's all good with your wife. It sounds sounds like, and she's like, yeah, well, I'm a great late. Okay, just came out of nowhere. You know, there's there's a masturbating joke in there, or someone talks about masturbating. Like, what the fuck is going on? This is Resident Evil. This isn't. You know what I mean? This isn't Saved by the Bell 2022 reunion. This is like Resident Evil. Don't even think Saved by the Bell has bad writing like that. It's got better writing. It, it's dreadful. This is how bad this this series is. This show is. Redeeming points. I've just got to a part in episode three where a giant spider is attacking Jade. In 2036, the storyline of 2036, great, it's fine, it looked fine. The CG isn't as good as the promotional um, uh, CG though, I've got to be honest, like the Cerberus looks good, definitely better than Welcome to Raccoon City's god awful CGI effects, but still not amazing, you know, not up to par, let's just say that. So we do get some bioweapons, we get the Lickers again, because they haven't been done to death, but anyway, for us fans of the games, it's getting boring now. We get the Cerberus, we get some badly, badly uh, produced zombie effects, like, fucking horrible. They call them Zeros in this because they, they have to change things, they have to come up with some goofy name. So they call them Zeros, they look shit. The main draw of your series is shit looking zombies. They look like, sort of like worse um, zombie makeup than something like the Crazies, but the Crazies was done well. But that's what they kind of remind me of. They've got like bubbles popping out of their skin and shit. It's horrible, man. Rubbish. Um, so yeah, what else do we get? Apparently in the future, spoilers, we're going to get some info on Lisa Trevor. Uh, look to be a tyrant from the trailers as well. 
um, and Nemesis is referenced as well. So that's interesting. I've got that to look forward to. But um, it's a slog to get through this. It really is. Like if it was anything else, I would have I would have dashed it. I, that would have been it. I would have gone. Nah, I'm, I'm good after two episodes. It's extremely boring. Um, there's so much filler, as you can imagine, because it's a series, so it's it's smaller budget, low, lower scale. But just the characters don't <laughs> the characters don't carry it. That's the thing. I'm watching Stranger Things sort of concurrently with this. And the characters of this are terrible. Stranger Things, they could literally be sitting around playing D&D. And it's interesting because the characters make it interesting. The characters in Resident Evil are one note, completely cardboard, cut out. They're terrible. So they don't carry it. So seeing as 90% of this series is them talking, it's boring. The first two episodes are boring. Then the third episode sort of picks up, but by by this point, I'm just like, nah, I'm good, I'm fine. Essentially, what the series is about is 2022 storyline is when Jade and Billy were kids, and there's some family melodrama shit going on. Um, Billy gets infected by a Cerberus, and Jade is a badass from when she was younger, but she's also like, the character irks me a bit because she's just like. You know, just rude constantly. It's kind of annoying. It's very tropey. This whole series is tropey. Apocalyptic zombie setting, tropey. Um, in London, tropey. 28 days later. You know, goofy characters and shit that you expect from like a low-budget series, tropey. <laughs> what else do you want me to say? Um, the outbreak occurs, you know, building up to it, tropey. Family melodrama, tropey. That you expect from a normal Netflix series, not from Resident Evil. It's not... It's not horror, definitely. Stranger Things started off with episode one and it was more horror than this. It was actually more like Resident Evil than this, than something that's carrying the Resident Evil name. Just running through things quick so I don't want to spend too much time on it, to be honest with you. Um, so yeah, it's very, very tropey. Like I said, the characters are one-dimensional. They don't carry it enough. It's extremely boring to begin with. It explains things that we already know as fans. It's just going through the motions. The zombies suck. The CGI ain't that great. It's better than Welcome to Raccoon City, but a lot of things are probably better than that. Uh, yeah, it, it's, it is what it is. It is exactly what it is. It's exactly what you think it is. The only thing that's cool about it is the fact that it continues on from the game storyline. But even then, that irks me. It pisses me off. Um, because, yeah, like I don't understand why Capcom keep allowing companies like Constantin to fuck with, with the law and keep dragging this, this series through the mud. Someone put it perfectly on one of the review scores I read and that's, I think it should, it's time to bury the hatchet with Resident Evil. I think, except for the games, just stop. But they won't because it earns money. So, yeah. As for reviews of this, GameSpot 9 out of 10. I think somebody's being paid off. They're getting that Netflix money. They're getting that hush money. By it. Not even hush money because they're paid to say good things by it. 9 out of 10. The best, I suggest you go and read their review. The best adaptation of any video game ever made. Sorry GameSpot, you lost me. That's absolute bullshit. This is terrible. Don't for a second think this is good. Like, if you want to use the excuse of, oh, but it's free and... Did it? No. It's, it doesn't matter. Then it should have more respect. So is, so is Stranger Things. So is um, uh, Breaking Bad. There are tons, tons of anime on Netflix you can watch. Like anime that's like Castlevania. That's amazing. Other than Series series 3, the rest of it was incredible. And Series 3, there's only some bad parts and some good parts. There's some good parts to it. This is horrible straight from the off. Episodes 1 and 2, crap. Like really, really hard to get through. Um... Episode 3 is getting a bit better because the action's flowing and it's moving forward a bit. But, yeah, terrible. Absolutely terrible. There's my review. That's my review. It's not a structured review and I don't care. I'm not going to spend any more time on this. Um, a lot of people were right. I was right. There are things to, to, to take away from this that are cool, definitely. But that, that could be said for any live-action Resident Evil adaptation. Yes, even the Anderson films. When the series is borrowing from the games, taking the monsters from the games and putting them in, into live action, 
yeah, it works. When it's borrowing plot points and stuff from the games, from the older games, history and lore, it kind of has fans like, oh, that's cool, that's a nice callback. But then it just ruins it all by being a generic cookie car zombie series, like zombie live action series that any other series can do and has done better. But it's just got the Resident Evil name slapped on it, attached to it. And it bo it's able to borrow stuff from Resident Evil lore and canon, you know. Um, yeah, <laughs> you know what? This makes Raccoon City look like Jurassic Park. There you go, I said it. Welcome to Raccoon City is a better adaptation than this series. It really is. That's the truth. Like, I can at least sit there and go, the tone's kind of good. You know, the tone's not too too far off like yeah the characters some of them they did them dirty but welcome to raccoon city you know it was more horror than this definitely it um it did a lot more right than this series does and that i will hold my hand up and i'll die on that hill but this is this is terrible like this doesn't even this doesn't even remind me of resident evil you know other than some little parts here and there um, I would, I would, I don't know, I would um, recommend that, it's a hard one this one, it's free, so you can just switch on Netflix, sit down, plonk yourself down and, and try and get through it all, if you're a fan. Um, then again, my recommendation, this is a 4 out of 10, 100%, 4 out of 10, my recommendation is, watch Infinite Darkness, because it's, uh, like, only, hmm, it's, it's a lot better than this, but only slightly Infinite Darkness, I was quite surprised, was, was a big disappointment. The CG films have gone downhill since. Like, I think the best one was um, Damnation. The one where Leon goes to Eastern Europe and he's, you know, fighting bioweapons. That was cool. That was the best one. Uh, Degeneration was alright, but a little bit, you know, a little bit kind of boring. And not enough bioweapons in it. But still, not bad. Um, those two were great. Vendetta is fun, but it's ridiculously over the top and stupid. You do have Leon chucking a grenade. Um during a, a Cerberus chase on a motorbike, these things can run like the Roadrunner, and he chucks a grenade and he blows it up like, as as his mid chase. Ridiculous, but Vendetta is a lot of fun. Definitely, you just have to kind of sort of switch your brain off a little bit, uh, which isn't always a great thing. So yeah, but Infinite Darkness, I thought it would maybe, you know, come back strong, like bring the CG sort of. Uh, Resident Evil plotline and storyline and the style, it would come back strong, but it didn't. Infinite Darkness was, was hugely disappointing, and I was looking forward to that, that's the thing. I didn't go into that with low expectations, I went into it with quite medium expectations, and it let me down. Still saying that, damn sight better than this. This is, this is horrible. It's absolutely dire. It's slightly better than the Anderson sequels after the first Resident Evil film. I still quite like the first Resident Evil film, and I still think Welcome to Raccoon City on multiple viewings can be enjoyable <laughs> in a schlocky I like the Doom movie and Dead or Alive movie way let's just say that so at least it has that going for it uh, Mortal Kombat in comparison the film in comparison now that I've watched it a few more times probably the best one they've they've made so f like, uh, well, not so far because Silent Hill is just still the king but um, probably the best one they've made in recent years not counting Sonic or Detective Pikachu, which like for kids, you know. So yeah, um, we've got a Silent Hill film coming from Christoph Gans, which is cool. He did he directed the first Silent Hill, so I'm looking forward to that. It's almost like a reboot continuation, so that's going to be cool. So far, as a Resident Evil fan, someone that's been there since it began, you know, director's cut. I can't recommend this to other Resident Evil fans. You're going to be I mean, go into it with low expectations if you really want to put yourself through it. But uh, I'd I'd suggest you watch Stranger Things. It's a hard one. Like I said, it's free. You can just jump into it and watch it and binge it. But um, I just I think it's going to leave a, a, a bit of taste in everyone's mouth. Really, that's even a fan of like the newer series and stuff, like and the remakes. You're gonna you're gonna sit there like this ain't like Resident Evil. You know, even the remakes are better than this definitely, or at least Resident Evil Nemesis remake. This is horrible. This is not how you do it. This is not what you do, Capcom. Unfortunately, 
unfortunately, this is going to continue as long as people give them more money and you keep watching this shit as fans. Because the everyday person, we know they're going to sit down and watch it and not really give a two. But as fans, we need to stop it. We need to sort of... Oh, I'm saying that whilst watching it. I know. Hypocrite. But I covered it because I'd covered Welcome to Raccoon City. I'd, I'd covered Infinite Darkness. You know, it's Resident Evil. It, it's carrying that name. It's to do with Resident Evil. So I'm, I, I covered it. And I thought, well, I'm not going to cover it and then, you know, not watch the series. It's free and then and comment on it. So it's dreadful. Like, if you take the first two episode, episodes, like I said... It's just the majority of it is talking and stuff that we already know. It's plot lines and, and, and plot that we already know as fans. It's not doing anything new. It's just recycling it all and then kind of melding the, the Anderson films along with the plot from the older games. What the fuck? What are you doing? Like, Capcom, why are you allowing these people just to tell the same story? Like, it's boring. And then in between that, you have the family melodrama, the angsty teenagers... You know, the callbacks to stuff that fans will get. Hey, yeah, I'm a fan. Oh, I love that. Like, it's it's like, it's not interesting. It, it, it all centers around the T-Virus and how these little pills they make now called Joy have small traces of T-Virus, I believe. So if you take like 20,000 of those, then you'll turn into a zombie. 20,000 of them. No one's going to be munching 20,000 pills. So, um, yeah, like not even the most hardened drug addicts. So... You know, it, it's stuff that we already know and have seen, done, loads of times. It doesn't do anything new. And then if you take it as its own thing, it's not even that unique as a zombie series. Like, it just does the same old shit that we've seen done loads of times. And not even zombie sort of media. We've seen it done in films like A Quiet Place, you know. Or we've seen it in other games like The Last of Us. Um, that aren't Resident Evil, this apocalyptic thing, this setting, Mad Max, it borrows from all those, like I said, the films borrowed from those, the Anderson films borrowed from Mad Max and things like that. So it doesn't do anything new. So overall, it's boring, it's bland, and it just has the Resident Evil name attached to it. And they've, they've been given the keys to, you know, to open up that safe box and use some of the lore and plot from the games, from previous games. So it's... Yeah, it's terrible, but it has, like I said, one massive plot hole, and that's the fact that Umbrella have been able to um, grow again as a business, reconstruct themselves, even though the world probably knows they did some shady shit, which is even explained in episode three. So yeah, I'm halfway through it. Um, I'm going to get through all the episodes. I'll give you my final thoughts and opinions on all the episodes, but once I finish them all, but yeah, my initial thoughts... Pfft, it's, it's not great. That's true. So I, you know, I was hoping I was going to go into it with low expectations and, and be surprised. Especially after GameSpot gave it such a high score and like I generally like 7 out of 10 and all this stuff. Like, no, this is a 4 out of 10 show, man. Don't get it twisted. Like, and not even because I'm like a diehard Resident Evil fan. Like, this is just a 4 out of 10 show. The acting's terrible, I forgot to say. Um, the cinematography is rubbish. Like, and people say, oh, but it's only a series. You don't expect that kind of level. Yes, you do. Because, like I said, Stranger Things. The first episode of cinematography was beautiful. Amazing shots of, like, these horror shots. It's not even technically really, like, a horror series. It's got horror elements. I know the Duffer Brothers are huge fans of Silent Hill and they incorporate some of that. But it does such a better job. Like, the first episode... Stranger Things is a 15. This is an 18. Not once have I seen anything where I've gone, Oh, yeah, that's definitely... The 18s, you know, should be slapped on that. No. In Stranger Things, there's a bunch of, like, ten-year-olds who have been slaughtered in the beginning moments of that series. And that's a 15. This this is just, like, ooh, you know? Probably the chainsaw bit where Jade chops a zombie up from the trailers, which they ruined. Probably that'll be, like, an 18. Or worthy of the 18 certificate, but... Yeah, it's, it's like it's made for kids. It's like it was made by a 12-year-old. I didn't expect much, and I haven't got much. I've got to be honest with you. Um, like I said, the only redeeming things were the things I pointed out in the video. But as a fan, I'd have to tell other fans to stay clear, stay away. Even if you're a fan from 7 onwards, and you've gone back and played the older games, or you like the remakes more, or wh whatever. Even as that kind of fan, even of a fan of Village, you should keep away from this. That's saying a lot. 
because it's just going to piss you off. It's irked me, definitely. And um, it's lucky that I do want to watch the whole thing to, to give my final thoughts on it. I'm halfway through it now. I might as well finish. But by episode two, I literally was like, nah, I think I could easily, if this wasn't Resident Evil, I could just, I could, uh, I could leave it. So yeah, really bad. Um, four out of ten, and I hope it doesn't get renewed because I don't really care. I don't need to see any more of it. Yeah, the the best standout things are Lance Reddick, even though he's obviously, like I said, he's playing a clone of Wesker, which I don't know how that makes sense, but we'll see when they come to explaining it. Um, Evelyn Marcus is cool in a weird. Some of her acting's a bit bad. Some of her dialogue's rubbish, but I kind of like that. She's weird, like, and it, it goes with the whole being the daughter of James Marcus and you know being a Resident Evil villain. Um, the bioweapons, some of the CGI is, is cool. It's fine. It's passable. Yeah, and some of the story elements taken from the games, and that's about it. So we'll see if it gets better. But I doubt it. I'm I'm still gonna, you know, I'm still gonna give it like a four out of ten for these first three episodes, definitely. So yeah, let me know what you guys think about it. Have you watched it yet? Are you going to watch it? Are you going to steer clear from it? Let me know in the comment section down below. If you like the video, smash that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you like me as a content creator. Until next time, I've been SystemChase66, and I'm out of it. Peace.